I want to talk about looking at state holding sort of divider circuits, but this is but in a case where these are not going to be resistors, which probably people are maybe fairly familiar with. But now we're going to talk about what happens when they're capacitors or inductors, which really kind of confuses people, and they're like, what am I going to do with that? The biggest problem with this is that you usually, in say a capacitive circuit, and I'm going to emphasize this primarily here, is that there's some sort of charge. And as the circuit is drawn, there is nowhere for that charge to go. It's not like there's an extra load here I just magically have. The way it's set, there's nothing there. And you might say, well, that's just weird and unphysical. It's not going to happen, except that likely the computer you're watching this on has some sort of um, non-volatile memory in it, and likely the way the non-volatile memory is working is based on this kind of circuit technique, which is what you see in your flash memory sticks and all sorts of other wonderful things. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of an important circuit element, and it turns out understanding these techniques are really valuable for a whole range of both linear and as well as sort of more transistor operated circuits. So very important to kind of understand th these concepts. And so when you look at the circuit, you think, well, okay, how do I approach this? And one thought that may come to you is going, well, maybe capacitors kind of feel like, like conductances. If you think in parallel and series combinations, it's kind of the same combinations you see from conductances. There's a couple of different ways of what you, why you might think that. And that's a fair way to, in fair conversation. And if you did, you might say, well, maybe the divider would just be that the output is equal to the input times a ratio, say, C1 is C1 plus C2. And if you started with that assumption, your intuition is actually pretty good. You're missing a little bit, though. And it's this conversation of something holding state. It's the situation of holding charge in this particular location. Why is this an issue for most people when they look at circuits? Well, a lot of times you've been, you know, you may have had some sort of circuit discussions, classes, something where someone has said to you, oh, well, I, every single point must have a DC path to ground. And by assuming a network graph in that form, well, everything is then fully specified by the circuit picture as you're looking at it. There's no hidden sort of things to look for. Unfortunately, this is a circuit that does not have a DC path to ground. There is no direct connection to ground through, say, a resistive element. In which case, there is a charge that's sitting there, and that charge is not specified by the circuit elements. And this is what often becomes very disturbing for certain individuals, depending on where and what kind of circuit history and background you're coming from. If you don't have a history or background where that's a problem, great, because this actually helps you understand what's going on here. So as you look at this circuit, you realize, all right, so there is some charge, and I have to think about it. Well, how would this charge affect me? Well, a very simple way to, to analyze this is to think, well, imagine I have the input voltage sitting at ground, sitting at zero volts. So I have two capacitors and a charge on it. Well, I know what that output voltage is. It'd be Q that charge over C1 plus C2 because the two capacitors are in parallel. So you just add them. And you think, hmm, so what voltage could it be? Well, it could be basically anything to based on the charge. Well, you think, well, how do I analyze the circuit? And one can kind of work through that. What you find, one, is that there's a certain charge across C1. Um, and that means I have a certain amount of pause. So for if I have a positive input voltage, I have a certain amount of positive charge here. That means I have a negative amount of charge on the other side. Okay. Remember, I have to have the same amount of charge that balances it. For Q2, I'd have a certain amount of charge, a certain voltage V out to ground. There's a certain positive charge for that and negative charge on the other side. So this Q1 would be what is the charge on this side of the plate. This Q2 would be what's the charge on this side of the plate. I would have the negative on that side and the negative on that side. It turns out from this no, there's nowhere for the charge to go. It can't leave. It's kind of stuck. And so as a result, the total charge has to stay the same. So there's going to be a charge there plus whatever is changing on this plate. Again, that's the negative one, so there's a negative sign there. And whatever's changing on the positive plate, that's going to be the positive one there. And so when you put all of these three things together, now what you get is a very interesting term, whereas V out actually equals to Vn C1 plus C1 plus C2, 
plus an offset voltage, and guess what that offset voltage is? It's Q over C1 plus C2. How can you how could you verify that to yourself? Well, set V in equal to zero. So all of the intuition makes sense, but now we have to think about what do we do with the state holding variable. By the way, I can do a similar sort of thing for inductors. It's a little less used, but it certainly is it's relevant. As I and again, this looks like now a current divider instead of a voltage divider. Um, and so I would imagine the L1 over L1 plus L2 because that's very typical, but then there's going to be some offset current because of what's being stored, what previous current was being stored in the inductor. And we know that inductors are sort of magnetic flux storage current and therefore current storage devices. So these are the kind of things we see. And again, it's really important to see this because even in very simple things like looking at the transient behavior of circuits, these you know, they're maybe short term. These things are important because over some time scale, these are exactly the circuits you see. And what you find is that there are circuits you can build that look exactly like this, even at a level which is, you know, at long over the age of the use that you're going to use them for.